Right, what we've got here is an MCP2307 expand, GPIO expander, a row of six buttons, uh, three LEDs, uh, a little OLED display. Um, these is on the I squared C serial port. Uh, this is a Teensy running as an Arduino. I'm, I'm working on a slightly different project, this one. Uh, and part of that is to have uh, an interface with buttons on it. So those buttons, I want to have them so I can press more than one button at a time and deal with that thing. So I've got my row buttons. I've got them connected up across the uh, top here. I've got my three LEDs. Uh, ignore all these ones. They're not connected. So when I compress a button, you can see on the OLED display that uh, the number comes up and you can see I've got a binary, I've got the hex number and I've got the decimal number uh, there. So it, it works by you press more than one, you press two together, you can press them all uh, and it all gives you the corresponding the corresponding binary number here uh, that reflects that actually number there is about all the 16 I.O. pins but it's only interested in the buttons that are connected so it's only these this range up here somewhere that actually ever gets um, updated. We've got a circuit diagram, here we are. Uh, here's the MCP203017 uh, GPIO, GP ports are up around here. I've only labelled the ones which are connected so these are three LEDs. Reset through the 1K resistor and pulled high. Uh, this sets the address, so the d default address of uh, 20 hex. Here's uh, the R squared C um, connection. Um, that's pulled high with these two resistors. So I've got six buttons. Uh, could have all 16 buttons. So. Obviously, this is all software, really. So we go back to this board. Looking on the main, looking in the software, for, I've used the uh, Adafruit uh, libraries uh, for the Arduino. Um, I've set the, I've defined the buttons, even though this definitions actually becomes a bit redundant later on. I just find it easier to do this. Uh, the Adafruit mapping uh, maps the um, button input buttons differently from what they are they actually appear in the circuit diagram. I mean, sorry, in the in the data sheet. That there is the Adafruit Adafruit um, connection. Uh, they go in a counterclockwise direction through A zero to B uh, B seven on the uh, GPIO pins. This sets up the LEDs. Uh, this bit sets up the screen, uh, the little LED screen. Um, dub, 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 dub. Start up the MCP. Uh, some some variables where I store stuff. Um, this out bit output here is for uh, the OLED display. I've also got a little OLED timeout. Button count. I put the buttons into uh, the button definitions into a little array go more about that later that's that's why I said it was slightly redundant I could have just put those numbers straight into uh, into this array um, but kind of makes life easy for myself so let's just skip down to setup um, right so it's standard setup well traditional setup uh, serial begin uh, pin mode, so we set our little LED, the onboard LED for uh, output. We set up our um, MCP so that using the standard default address of OX20. Again, set up the display. Now I'm setting up the LED, setting up the buttons. So I can use that little array that I did earlier. So I don't, you know, can just do it in a, in a four next loop. And I've got input pull up. On the button, so I don't need a uh, 
a pull up resistor attaching to the buttons. Um, so I've set up with uh, LEDs as outputs um, and then I set the thing. So you've got to remember with the MCP turning things on, pulling it low, it's sort of invert, it's, it's the other way around is what you'd think you need to do. So current flows from, from power through the LED uh, through the MCP and then to ground. So now we're going to our loop. Um, the loop is simply blink without delay. So every 200 milliseconds it's doing to see if there's a button pressed. Uh, I'll just go down further a little bit to show you the LEDs which is simpler. Uh, so every second we set the LED for, which is this one. Um, we use this logic inverter technique. I'm going to call it that. It's probably got a better name to to make it slightly more useful. So for our purposes, high means on, and low means off. Uh, which is what this bit of this bit of code here does. This exclamation mark and brackets and then I wait a millisecond and then I've got a little timeout on the OLED display this so the display gets switched off after a few seconds 240,000 milliseconds I found that with these if you leave them on too long uh, they tend to get a bit worn out uh, so right back to the interesting stuff we'd scan our MPC MCP buttons. This is where the magic happens. We'll work our way through the array uh, with this for next for next loop. Um, we pick out each button here, um, and then we use digital read as well as well as our our inverter. So when we're pressing the button, um, the software is reading that as a high. So that's a one, um, and then we bit shift the state. Uh, that's the state we just read. That's the position of the button. So that's button number. So that would be two, three, four, five, and so on. And then that ors it with the output. But uh, every time the scan is being done, a uh, button press variable is being been uh, reset. So it, if no buttons have been pressed that re returns zero uh, otherwise it returns what's been pressed. Uh, I'll just go through this bit shifting. I'm not very wise on bit, bit shifting. So I want to show bit shifting through the medium of a Python script. This code is written to kind of show us what is happening inside the code I've written on for the Teensy for the Arduino but it obviously doesn't respond to button presses or anything like that you have to sort of simulate that this is the output the BP variable is the one is the accumulator that picks up the button press and is accumulating and that that's the output the state is the pressing of the button um, so that's the MCP digital read line I've got eight buttons attached, eight virtual buttons. Instead of you putting all the numbers into an array, I'm just iterating through the count. So this is our loop here with the range of zero to eight. This line here is our bit shifting. I've not put the OR on yet, so I'll show that in a moment. But you can see here, state is one, and with that position, whatever it is in the loop, is then put into uh, the output. BP and then we, we print what's going on so we print the position we're printing the state which is always going to be one in this instance and then we're going to be doing the output in the output will be in binary uh, in hex and in decimal just to be thorough and then finally this is the output so if we run that code we can see our our 8-bit numbers and we can see that the uh, the shifting moves everything on so uh, we've put position 3 puts these numbers puts the number there position 4 puts the is that one's true that one's true and so on and you can see here that every on the decimal output 
that the output is doubled uh, uh, every time four eight two four eight sixteen so on. That allows us to give a unique number when we press more than one button. So if we press buttons um, one and three, we can add those two together. Those get that comes out as ten, which would be unique in our output. So we would know definitely that those two would be done. So that doesn't have the OR function. So we put in the OR function and then we can save that and then we can run that again. And we can see now that the BP is actually accumulating the results. So uh, we've done that on what first one's done and then that adds it up. So effectively it is now saying those we're now pressing buttons uh, 0 and 1 and then buttons pressing on here 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so Now I've done another script which might show the buttons in a clearer kind of way, perhaps. If we go to bit shift 2, what I've done here is I've imported the random functionality. Again, the same as before, bit button counts and state. But the state this time here has been set randomly, so it's either a 1 or a 0. And this will work as a, a stand-in for the MCP digital read, hopefully. So what we can do now is if we run this, Bishop 2, uh, we can see, let's see if we can get a better one. There we go. So I'm pressing buttons uh, 0, 1 and 7, and you can see that the accumulator are finally on the output. That's 131. So that one, uh, that one, and then because these are all zeros, nothing changes until it gets the last one, and then that output starts. Let's try again, see what we get. Uh, one, one. So there the one, those are the ones that are true. 29. So the output is 29 because we're only pressing zero, two, and buttons zero, two, and three. But I've, yeah. I think I've, I think I've explained that. <laughs> right, so that's kind of it for the thing. So what happens back in the um, in the main loop? Um, so if the if this scan buttons doesn't return returns anything except zero or not equal zero, so we're going to go. Uh, we're going to wake up the display. And print and print the uh, output. So we print the output. Um, what we're doing here is converting that, um, converting the integer um, into a string, so it looks nice. So we can put in leading zeros. We bit shift our way through the uh, integer and then uh, pick out the ones we want. Uh, so we know it's a 16-bit uint uh, unsigned integer. Um, so we can just go 16 bytes. Uh, in number, yeah, that's our original number. And that this code here just picks out the bytes, the bit that we want to see uh, through that loop. So 0 to 16. Then that one there, uh, this line here is the uh, is the char string char char array, and that plonks the bit going backwards. Bit true, so there's a bit of logic. So a bit of is true. Append a, a char one, and then we just or or, or put a zero, and then back MC bit bit button binary. Uh, we then close the, the, the uh, char array, so we put a nice little ending on it. The traditional uh, end of string character. And um, that's that done. Then we send that to the screen. That copy, this sprintf copies p out, copies this binary number, this binary char array, into p out. Uh, and then we can display p out. p out is just formatting the string to uh, do this. Um, and again, we do this for uh, uh, the 
hex number and the thing. I'm doing it like this so that the, the string well, it displays nice, leading zeros and things like that. Once we display it, now we've got the buttons, perhaps we've displayed our buttons, um, we can now switch on the button press number. So are these first two examples are just like button one and button two. It just turns an LED off and back on. Um, this one here is buttons two and six. I've put, uh, that's the decimal number, that's a hex number, uh, but you can put any, like it says there, into, you could, I could put uh, 1088 there, uh, or I could even put the binary 0B, whatever it is, but that would be madness, I think. And then we set it, set the button pressed back to zero um, once we've processed it. So you, you, your little functions would hang off this. Um, this is kind of like a bit, so button one, page up, button two, page down, shift, so button four, button six could be shift, and then shift F, shift F4, whatever you want to call it, or anything like that, so it's the usual collection of numbers. Um, I think I've described everything. Good, right, yes. Um, hope that's useful, uh, and thanks for watching.